Welcome to Silver Hill Farm, Bradford, New Hampshire. We're the Bruss family. I'm Pam and we raise Hereford beef cows for our friends and family. And we have a little farm school for homeschoolers, it's a supplemental program. So they come here, it's a project-based arts and agriculture school, and they help us raise our animals and become part of our family as well. 12 years ago, I met Nathaniel, um, and he said, I hope you eat beef. <laughs> and I didn't. Um, but then I learned how he was growing the, the beef cows. And I was a horse person, so I did not think that cows would be my thing and I utterly fell in love with them. It started with one cow named Maya. We call her Mama Maya. We have strong bonds with all of them. Nathaniel works full-time, has his own business, and is also a full-time farmer. So that means I don't really see him that much. Nights and weekends are um, the time when he's doing all of his farming chores, which includes fencing, mowing, fertilizing fields, moving cows, we spent last year 30 hours just driving back and forth to the butcher for multiple trips. And that's something people really don't realize is how much time it takes. That doesn't include the time in the trailer moving cows from field to field and running around the field multiple times chasing those cows because maybe they don't feel like moving today. So even though I'm doing most of the talking today, I would really give him the kudos for being the behind the scenes and doing the majority of the hardcore work. The hardest thing is trying to be a small scale farmer in an industry that is really commercialized and maybe doesn't care as much about with each individual animal. The largest challenge for us recently has been being bumped from slaughterhouse to slaughterhouse. So we were with Vermont Packing House um, and we were processing 17 animals a year and we were told we were too small. They just want to streamline their processes and not have special cut sheets for each individual customer. We're grass fed only, no grain, and we love our animals. And that's really important to us, so where their process is important. Um, we have to schedule them a year in advance. We'll spend hours on a phone, redialing and redialing until we can get through on the day that we're allowed to schedule and maybe get an appointment for the following year, maybe not. We can't really predict what our costs are going to be because of um, external forces like that. I do feel that the current situation we are in with COVID really changed our customers outlook on small farms, which is really amazingly cool. You know, they understand the pressures we're feeling and have been really understanding and supportive where before they might not have been as understanding because the knowledge wasn't there and everybody became quickly aware of the importance of availability for food. I'm hopeful that on our farm, we'll be able to figure out how to decrease the amount of time that it requires um, so that we get more time as a family. We are gonna cut our herd down um, because you can only balance so much and it's been a really hard year. So I'm hopeful that we find more of a balance. So we're building fields and creating infrastructure here to make it more sustainable. The consumers, you know, how you guys can help small farmers, not just us, is really go out, know your farmer, know where your food comes from, so that when you're in the store and making those choices, you're able to be educated in making that decision. Maybe it costs a little bit more, or maybe it, you have to take 10 more minutes to drive to the market instead of market basket. Um, that those choices are being made and making sure that other farmers are being supported.